room in a hospital and people of all faith and backgrounds come there to pray. And there are some scriptures over there, there are Quran, there are Bibles, and there are some pamphlets. And the title of those pamphlets were especially interesting. Because keep in mind this is a hospital. People are going through pain. People are losing loved ones. And some might be coming in to this chapel to pray. And I just pray but wonder, especially in those moments, where is God? Even the ones that might not even believe in God, where is He? I'm going through pain. I'm going through suffering. Where is He? And so one of the titles of those pamphlets was, Where is God? And you even see some of the billboards on the highway. If you drive down some of these highways, you'll see billboards that talk about God now. And one in particular said, there is evidence for God. Even, even the wording sounds a little strange, because God was always there. It's not like we just found him. Saying there is evidence for God implies that he was missing and now we found him. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always there. But the point is, people are wondering, where is, where is God? I'm going through a lot. And we know as believers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. But His presence is most questioned at certain times. And especially with those who are suffering. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, despite what they say, He is near. And not just near, He is most near to those who are suffering. And so, these ideas that are rampant, some for good reasons, where is Allah? Some people are wondering. I'm suffering. There are people suffering. Where is he? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, actually, those who are suffering, those are the ones who I am the most near to. What is the evidence? People are looking for signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't manifest in his physical existence. God does not need to be in human form for you and I to see. But we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's works through His creation. We see it through even those who are suffering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, you and I, on the Day of Judgment, the Prophet sallallahu says, a man comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, مَرِضْتُ وَلَمْ تَعِدُنِي O oh, son of Adam, I was sick and you did not visit me. He says, Ya Allah, how can I visit you? How can you even get sick? SubhanAllah. And what is the response? He says, Marla abdi, wala uzirtahu, la wajatani inda, SubhanAllah. And my slave became sick. And had you visited him, you would have found who? You would have found me with him. What do they say? Because those people are suffering, God does not exist. What do we say? Because those people are suffering, Allah is most near to them. And that's what he says. Allahu Akbar. And then the hadith continues. I was thirsty. And you didn't quench my thirst. You didn't give me anything to drink. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, had you... Get, have you, had you given that individual some, something to drink, something to eat, you would have found me with that person. So don't question where is Allah when you see those who are suffering. Question where are you? Where am I when I see people who are suffering? Don't project the blame on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Complete the assignment and do your role. It's as if just saying, oh, the teacher didn't teach right and then absolving yourself of any responsibility. 
and the whole discussion about the existence of Allah is, is a, a necessary discussion. It's not a problem. That at a certain point, where does it end? Most people don't have a problem with believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most people don't have a problem with believing in God. The reason they don't want to believe in God is because if, if they admit that God exists, therefore they have a responsibility. And no one wants responsibility. I already have responsibilities to my wife, to my mom, to my kids. You mean I have to have responsibilities with Allah? And, and complete responsibility? Meaning I have to do everything he says and stay away from everything he says not to do. That's a lot. And for a society that values freedom, <laughs> that's the last thing I want. <laughs> I want my freedom, anything but my freedom. And so the problem with this whole discussion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala existing is actually a problem of us admitting, okay, if I do prove to you that He exists, what are you going to do? There's a beautiful story during the time of, of Imam al-Razi. He was one of the great scholars of Islam and he visited Baghdad. And a lot of the young men and women of knowledge hurried to gather and learn from him. A scholar is visiting, let us take benefit. Alhamdulillah, today we had a very Noble scholar, Shaykh Amr Sulaiman, may Allah bless him. And when a scholar visits, you take advantage of him or her. And so this imam, he visits the city and a, an elderly lady, she watches from a distance and she says <laughs> to the, one of the young men, Man hadha rajul? Well, who is this man and why are they gathering all over him? Like, <laughs> what's the big deal? And the young man, he says so passionately, Don't you know that this is a scholar who came up with a thousand proofs for the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A thousand proofs. It's not a bad thing, it's, it's nice. Like The scholarly material. And the lady, she replies with her faith and her conviction. She says, لو لم يكن عنده ألف شك لما أحتاج إلى ألف دليل. الله أكبر. It's like if he didn't have a thousand doubts, he would have needed a thousand proofs. You need a thousand proofs for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah, the scholars will do their work and they'll teach us and, and that's good. But you and I shouldn't need a thousand proofs. Because we have more than a thousand. And even this scholar, when he heard her response, they say that he said, That is the faith of these elderly women. It's like as if almost saying, I wish I had that. Because we also know in our tradition, you can have, you can have a lot of knowledge, but never add up to the kind of faith that some of the elderly men and women who have such strong faith have. They might not have had the opportunity to gain knowledge. But mashallah, their faith, their iman, their conviction is enough to outweigh the entire ummah sometimes. They might not have read all the books and attended all the classes, but the faith that they have, subhanAllah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in faith. And so dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs are all around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the signs of my existence are all around you. He tells you to think about this. Islam does not shy away, shy away from encouraging you to think and ponder. Starting with the entire cre creation of the heavens and the earth. إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَاهَ فِي اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Verily in the creation of the nights and day, in, in the heavens and the earth, and the alternation of night and day, is signs for those who ponder, for those of 
of righteousness. Those whom ponder upon the creation of the heavens and the earth. And they realize that there's a purpose. Why? Because they say, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا Oh Allah, you did not create this for nothing. You mean to say all this beauty came from nowhere? You mean to marvel at some car that some guy invented but not think that the beauty in nature came from someone? And especially us. We love giving credit where credit is what? Where credit is due. You know that if you publish, an, if you write an essay and you plagiarize, you say I got it from someone else, you get it from someone else and you say you did it, woe to you. Your, prof, your professor would tell you I'd rather you fail and get a bad grade than you plagiarize. Because we believe in giving credit where credit is due. What about the entire creation of the heavens and the earth? All this, and you're going to say, huh, came from nowhere. So what does the believer say? رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَعْطُ Oh Allah, no, this is not from nowhere. Oh Allah, this is not in vain. Oh Allah, this has a purpose. So what do they do? Subhanak. One word they say. What do they do? They glorify him. This miraculous nature that you see around you is supposed to lead you somewhere. It's not that you just look at it, marvel at it, and post it on Instagram and say, wow, what a beautiful sight this is, and that's fine. But it's supposed to lead you somewhere. So what? Okay, it's beautiful. But there's a point Subhanak, glory be to you that we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all of this. Thaqina adab al-nar and protect us from the hellfire. Oh Allah, because this exists, there is an afterlife. And what do we ask you? Protect us from the fire. Ya Allah, I know that this is a sign of your existence. Wa fil ardi ayatul lil muqineen. And in the earth, is signs for those who have conviction. There's so many signs around you. Even in your own self. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell you, okay, you can't see that far. Look within your own self. You can't travel the land. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Siru fil ard. Go upon the earth and ponder upon this creation. But even if you can't do that, and in your own self, ponder upon that. Do you not think, do you not ponder, do you not see? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us again, Ya Allah. And how many signs in the heavens and the earth they pass by it and they are heedless. What do we say? It's not that deep. You see beauty. It's like, oh, it's not that deep. What do you mean it's not that deep? The Quran is deep. The creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very deep. It's you who is very shallow. Ponder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to create and think and ponder. Ponder upon this creation. It leads you to Him. But if you don't, وَمَا تُغْنِي الْآيَاتُ وَالنُّذُرْ عَنْ قَوْمٍ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you many signs. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if we don't take these signs to mean something, what use are they for us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that. وَمَا تُغْنِي الْآيَاتُ وَالنُّذُرُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us He can send you signs. There are many signs. And during the time of the Prophet وسلم, they asked for signs. And signs came. And they disbelieved. And signs came. 
and they disbelieved. And then, well, interestingly enough, there was one sign that they thought, oh, this might be a sign. But the Prophet ﷺ was not desperate. He didn't need proof from nowhere. They saw that at the same time the, the death of his son, the moon had shown a sign for them. The moon had changed in its appearance. It had eclipsed. And the Prophet ﷺ said, no, it's not eclipsing for me. Prophet ﷺ didn't need that sign. He said, no, it's not eclipsing for my son's death. There are many greater signs than this. This is from the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it points to him, not me. The Prophet ﷺ wasn't there to call to himself. The signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala weren't used to call to a specific individual. The Prophet ﷺ had the firm truth and all the signs that occurred, he attributed them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the believer. Whatever they see of good, they attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They think about the creation of the heavens and the earth. They think about their own creation. They think, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلْيُنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانِ مِمَّا خُلِقْ Let the, the man, let the women think of what they were created of. خُلِقَ مِمَّا إِنْ They were created from this clot, liquid, a liquid clot. It's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, look at your science. Look at your science within you. Islam is not against science. But it's that you recognize that because of this science, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. It's that you recognize that because of this fascinating evidence, there is surely a Lord. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين لا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والعاقبة المتقين يا رضي sisters we are talking about the signs of Allah سبحانه وتعالى signs of his, ex- his, his existence all around us we have plethora of signs Signs within the earth, within the heavens, within our own self. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the evidence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's existence is no doubt. But the question is, is what, what will we do when we have that conviction? Will we take the responsibility, the oath that we had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Him to the best of our abilities? That is a believer. People will see the fascinations of this world, but they'll turn a blind eye. The believer, you and I are not like that. When we see anything that is wonderful, that is glorious, we give that glory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This increases our faith. This increases our faith because that is all that is around us is reminding us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ They're constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala standing up, lying down, sitting down, and lying down. It's all constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create any, any of this in vain. There is, there is a purpose. And because there is a purpose, we recognize that we have a role to play. Allahumma ghfir lil muslimin wal muslimat. Al-ahya minhum wal amwat. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdi bina. Waj'alna sababa liman ihtada. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha. Wa zakiya and khayra ma zakaha. Allahumma ghfir lana wal muslimin wal muslimat. Al-ahya minhum wal amwat. Allahumma ansar al-islam wal muslimin fi kulli makan. اللهم كل إخواننا المستضعفين المظلومين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصرهم على من ظلمهم اللهم انصرهم على من عداهم اللهم كلهم لا عليهم يا أرحم الراحمين وصلي وسلم وبارك على حبيبنا يا نبينا محمد في الأولين وفي الآخرين وفي الملائين إلى علاء إلى يوم الدين وأقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا 
الله Still stirring your lines and filling the gaps. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Rahman Rahim Maliki Yawm Iddeen Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem Sirat Al-Ladheena An'amta Alayhim Ghayri Al-Maghdub Alayhim إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا فقنا عذاب النار سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله